Hi folks, how are you doing? I am the Reverend Danny Crosby, Unitarian Minister serving congregations in Altrincham and in Ermston in the northwest of England. I do hope that you're finding the love and witnessing the blessings in life despite life's many challenges. I offer this devotion as a balm for the heart, the mind, the spirit and the soul. And the title for today's reflection is The Wind Tells Bone, Connecting in Love and in Loss. So I invite us to still ourselves. Let's invite a loving presence to be here amongst us and to awaken from deep, deep within us all. I have lit the flame of freedom in the cup of belonging, acceptance and love. We join together physically separate, but united in our devotion to life and to love. Help us to sing for joy like the birds each morning sing their faith, their faith in being alive, their faith in just being here. That sometimes, sometimes I feel like a motherless child. In this time and space, may you feel the warmth of acceptance and of love. Sometimes I feel like I have no friend. In this time and in this space, may you know that you are wanted, needed and loved. That you are accepted as you are exactly as you are this moment. Sometimes I feel like I'm almost gone. In this time and in this space, may you know hope deep in the core of your being, in your heart and in your soul. Even when you are a long way from home. May you know the love of home. May you know it at the ground beneath your feet. And in the depths of your being. Know that you belong. You belong here as you are. Exactly as you are this moment. The cherry blossom is falling all around us now. I saw a car covered in it the other day. My car was too actually as I noticed, I noticed this as I left for home the other evening. There's that beautiful pink snow all around the grounds at the chapel here but it will soon be gone. The cherry blossom does not cling on it knows it must let go for new life to follow. For we humans, it's not so simple. We hold on to life. We hold on to our lives and we hold on to one another. We hold on to the love that we have shared with those that we have loved and that we have lost. This is grief. This is the price that we pay for love. The beauty of the cherry blossom causes some sadness to me. It makes me grieve. I love the cherry blossom. That said, part of its beauty comes in the fact that it only lasts for about a month and then it falls and then it's gone. Even though I know it will come back again when it goes, my heart aches for the loss. This is grief. Grief is about love and it's about the loss of someone or something that we love or have loved. And this is why grief, of course, comes in so many forms, for we lose so much in life. The most aching grief, of course, is caused by the death of those we love so dearly. The more that we love them, the greater the grief. And grief, of course, is not something you can just let go of. 
and I'm not sure you ever should actually. We should hold that love close to our hearts. Yes, when someone we love dies, an aspect of them always remains in our hearts. That said, when we lose someone that we love, we also lose a piece of our hearts. We're scarred. I host a, a fortnightly grief group on Zoom. The Colours of Grief, our sh shared experience of love and of loss. We used to meet in person, but ever since the pandemic hit, we've been unable to do so. The group is needed by those who join us. It helps us feel less alone and isolated in our grief. And there's so much grief around at this time. I'm sure we have all lost someone that we love over the last year. And none of us have been able to mark the loss and grieve as we would normally do. We've also been unable to live our lives as we would normally do. There is so much grief in this too. Grief is everywhere. That said, if we had not done what we have done, so much more death and loss would have been what there would have been, wouldn't there? We only need looks at India now to see the horror that could have happened and our health service become overwhelmed. I grieve so much for the suffering all around. It breaks my heart. Maybe I'm losing a piece of my heart too much. Who knows? I don't feel alone in this. I have noticed that something that grieving people share in common is this need to still communicate in some way with those that they have lost. People go to places that are special to them to talk. It is common, but not something that people share very often publicly. They're worried what other people will think, I suppose. These one-way conversations, though, they continue on and on. It's a way to keep the love shared alive, even after the loved one has gone. Happens all over the world. It's always happened. I recently learned of a powerful and beautiful example of this in Japan. When the garden designer Sasaki lost his beloved cousin in 2010, he found a unique way to come to terms with his grief. To call his loved one by telephone. He built a white telephone booth in the style of the old red ones that used to be all over this country. I don't know if you've noticed, actually, but in the countryside, those old red boxes are oft often these days host defibrillators, bringing life to those who might lose theirs. Wonderful idea. But Sasaki placed this, his white phone box on his hilltop garden. The phone was an old Baker-like dial telephone. Can you imagine one of those? Can you remember them? And it was unconnected to any earthbound telephone system when he picked up the phone his words were spoken to the wind carried off like f prayer flags blowing in the wind he did this to keep the memory of his cousin alive by calling him and speaking to him regularly as he told the japanese public broadcasting network nhk because my thoughts couldn't be relayed over a regular telephone line I wanted them to be carried on the wind. So he called his phone the wind telephone. The wind telephone was built on the outskirts of Otsuchi, a small coastal town in northern Japan. As Sasaki was finishing his project, the region was hit by a magnitude 9.1 earthquake on the 11th of March 2011. Now, even though the quake was, was off the coast and didn't inflict direct damage, it did lead to gigantic tsunamis and Osuchi was hit by 30 foot high waves, destroying the town and killing one in 10 of the 16,000 inhabitants. Soon the wind telephone became a place of solace for thousands. It is thought that over 10,000 people visited the site in the next three years to speak to their loved, their loved ones, their loved ones that were now lost. Some of those dead were never found. 
But it was not only the loss to the tsunami whose loved ones came. Others joined the pilgrimage too, including folk who had lost their relatives and friends and loved ones to suicide and to accidents and in other many other tragic ways. Many media outlets have told the story and some of the conversations on the wind telephone have, have been recorded. You can listen to them actually. And if you listen to them, you will hear tears and laughter in such deep conversations. A kind of unanswered confessional, I suppose, where loved ones speak their hearts into the wind, where loved ones can perhaps hear without judgment. There are voices crying out regret, the pain of loss, despair, guilt, frustration, the search for strength, hope and the will to carry on without the loved ones. These are beautiful cries of the human heart. Don't we all cry them out at times? I do. Well, it seems this is this is cap. Other people are taking this idea on. There are versions of the wind phone in other parts of the world. In Oakland, California, one was constructed by Jordan Stern who in February 2017 constructed one to commemorate the 36 people who died in the ghost ship warehouse fire. One of the dead was his friend. This wind phone was created according to the artist to comfort a field of people grieving in Oakland. In, in August 2017, an anonymous art collective in Dublin, Ireland, which was called Altruches, built a wind phone on Two Rock Mountain. It was built without permission and, and it was built from salvaged material, just scrap material, I suppose, things they just found. Sadly, though, this wind telephone was destroyed only two weeks after its construction. It seemed that there were many people that felt uncomfortable with the project. Sad to hear, I think. But the power of the message was there and just in the creation whether it was destroyed or not. No doubt they grieved the loss, but something beautiful remained. Another replica red phone was created by Tomohiko and Kazuko Katsuna. They named their phone the Phone of the Sea Breeze. It was built in memory of one of Katsuko's students, an 18 year old woman who had taken her own life in 2009. In January 2020, another temporary wind phone was created in Provincetown, Massachusetts by an artistic collective there. Whilst another was created in October 2020 in California by Susan Vitrone and the sculptor Steve Reed. This one was constructed in memory of Vitrone's mother, who sadly had recently died. And another wind phone has been created in response to the loss of life due to the COVID-19 pandemic. In March this year, an artist who has again remained anonymous built one in, on the Aspen Mountains of Colorado. Now the artist has remained anonymous because it is forbidden to build shrines in US national forests. That said, this phone has not been destroyed. It has remained as an outlet for people mourning deaths caused by the pandemic. I wonder how many of these will be built in the coming months and years. I think we will need them. I'm personally considering writing to our Prime Minister or again perhaps might write to Andy Burnham, the Mayor of Manchester, or even to our local Trafford Authority. I think we're going to need them or we're going to need something like them. During our last Colours of Grief that I met on Monday evening, we, we, we thought that Withenshaw Park would be an ideal venue as one of our number actually goes there often to talk to his lost son. I'm thinking of contacting my favourite sculpture, the great British sculpture, Anthony Gormley. Perhaps he could construct them up and down the land. A place where we can all go individually or collectively to grieve, to cry out in anguish, to connect, to live through our grief, to hold on to the love lost and to live our lives. 
We need to find ways to express our collective grief if we are to rebuild again. And I don't just mean rebuild our material lives, but to rebuild our emotional, mental and spiritual lives too. Our souls are crying out. Yes, we may well be coming back to normality, but there is so much grief in this land and in every land. And there are many people throughout this world that are still caught up right in the middle of the horror of all of this. Just look at India right now, but other lands too, not just our land. It's a song for the God of all the nations, for your land and for mine. Song of love, a song of peace. We need to find ways to connect, to heal, to express our lost love, something that we've been unable to do for too long. And there's going to be a price to pay if we do not. And I don't just mean a price to pay for this, our generation, but for the generations to come, those that will follow us. We need to find a way. All of us belong to the largest community on God's sweet earth, the community of grievers. Grief is the price that we pay for love. It is a price worth paying for what is life without love. Life is nothing without love. It is meaningless, an empty vessel. The only way to escape grief is to totally armour your heart and to deny love. And who'd want to live like that? To live without love, to live the life of a zombie, just wandering around, nothing touching you, being untouched by life. Who'd want to live like that? Half alive and half dead. When we lose someone that we love, it changes us forever. Life will never be quite the same again. And we do not rise above the pain of grief. We cannot pretend it is not there. We don't just simply get over it like we would an illness or a condition. It is neither of those. What happens is that we are changed by grief. And as a result, our hearts are enlarged by it. And as a result, we grow as human beings if the love has truly been realised. You see, grief is really about transformation, not transcendence, by the way. That's the true nature and purpose of religion too. Transformation, not transcendence. You don't rise above things, become separate from things. It's about being in life, a part of life, not leaving life. Feet on the ground, in the soil, in the earth, feeling alive. Grief is not an attempt to explain the loss or even understand some meaning look locked into what's happened it's not about that instead it seems to me that grief is more about finding meaning in the absence of an explanation by living meaningful lives following the grief due to the grief being transformed by the grief by the love for it's love that changes us it awakens our hearts it opens our hearts but it causes our hearts to bleed we should all be bleeding hearts. Well, we are, but sometimes we deny that. For if we haven't, then life's not touched us. We've not been touched by love. For grief is the price we pay for love. How do we create meaning from the loss of the last year or more? It's not an easy question to answer. Perhaps it begins by creating space for all of us to grieve. Perhaps something like these wind telephones is one way. I'm sure there are many others. Perhaps communities like the ones I serve can become that kind of space. Perhaps this is something for all of us to think about. Perhaps this is something to focus on in the months and the years ahead. Perhaps we could create spaces. Perhaps we could become spaces where folk can come and find solace in their loss and grief. A place where they can share and express this love. I would be interested to hear your thoughts and your feelings. 
It really is up to us. It's up to all of us, for we are truly in this together. All the when, all the way. We're all in the wind. Can you hear the voices, the cries of the lost? For the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. I can just hear the birds outside actually at the moment, not the wind. It's a beautiful sound. It's a beautiful blessing to hear that sound, to feel alive. Some people hear their loved ones in the bird song too. I love to sing back to the birds and I love it when they sing back to me. It's a beautiful blessing. And I'm going to end this reflection with just a few words of blessing. You know, we need to bless more and we can all bless. We bless by giving our whole hearts to life and to one another. So let's begin today. Let's give our whole hearts to one another. Let's give our whole hearts to life. Here's some final words of blessing. May the love which overcomes all differences which puts to flight all fears, which heals all wounds, which reconciles all who are separated. May this love be in us and among us now and always. And may we carry a vision of that love with us. And may we do so in all that we feel, in all that we think, in all that we say, in all that we do. Amen.